sunshines welcome back to my channel um as always welcome if you are joining this channel for the very first time and you enjoy content like this please be sure to join the family by hitting that subscribe button and also hit that notification bell so you don't miss a beat in today's video like thumbnail suggests I am going to be talking about top 10 things because I learned so much but the top 10 things that I've learned in the 30 years of being alive. 30 for me was such a reflective time because I think for the first time I was like oh I'm an adult. <laughs> Usually I'm like oh we got to find an adult to take care of this. We got to find an adult to do this and I'm like oh gosh like I'm the adult that I'm gonna call on. I'm literally one of you guys. I don't know which adult you feel like you need but that's not me. But all jokes aside, this was the age that I kind of um, came to terms with even being an adult and even that is a whole process which I hope to talk about. Um, I wanted to highlight top lessons that I've learned um, in the past 10 years so I'll jump right into it. One of the top things that I learned is that not all things require my input. And so let me fast track. I've always been the kind of person, I'm very solution focused is the way I like to think my mind works, right? So every time there's a problem, I'm like immediately I'm like very, I, I have fun with finding solutions and just troubleshooting things. So the moment somebody addresses me with a problem, my immediate reaction is to kind of like, you know, jump in with the solution. And I realized that not all things require my input. I can sometimes just listen and nod my head. Not all things require my input because one, sometimes my inputs are not needed. Sometimes ideas come to you not to be questioned, not to be um, kind of like twisted and pulled, dive deep into and sometimes you can just be a ear to somebody. Even just ask like, hey, um, I know you just brought this to me. Is there anything that you would like from me? Kind of checking in with the person to see what they want. I've been on the receiving end of that before and I think that's when it really hit me. Like sometimes I can just listen. I don't need to jump in in every situation. Item number two that I've learned is that some chapters of my life were meant to be walked along. Again, with the memes. I saw this meme that said, when God has a calling over your life, it's a call. It's not a conference call. And I am definitely and have been one of those people and still working up through these things. I think there have been times where I felt God drop things in my spirit and I'm like, or projects or like, um, um, it could have been Korea, it could have been like an idea, it could have been like a concept. I'm all about let's do things together, let's grow together, let's make money together. How can I help you? How can you help me? And this I think comes from deep within. When I was younger, I never was allowed to go anywhere by myself because I was a girl and my mom just felt like for safety reasons, it would be better if I'm with somebody. So the grocery store or whether it was to school, whether it was um, to the hair salon. My little brother, <laughs> he talks about it to this day. He had to just sit in the, um, the hair salon and just wait for me. As traumatizing as that was for him, I developed, I guess, a dependency on just having to do things together. So I guess growing up, I never really grew out of that. And so I remember when I, um, when my brother went to college and my cousin went to college. So if I wasn't with my brother, I was with my cousin. I was always with somebody. So I love doing things together and I really never got a chance to do things on my own. Every opportunity I got, every opportunity I get, and still now, like I'm always like, oh my God, who can I bring aboard? I need somebody to do it with, or like even if it's an idea, I need somebody to talk through it with. It was just always needing that companionship and needing somebody to go through with it. Sometimes good things come out of being alone and just being to yourself and just really solely dependent on God for some kind of guidance or direction. So, so the third point is that plans are sometimes overrated. I believe in goal setting. So set general goals like, for example, I would like to be rich. That is a plan. But as far as how I'm going to get there, it, it should be flexible. You, you kind of box yourself. So let's say I want to be rich. So the game plan for the um, riches is that I'm going to, first I'm going to start um, a fish farm. Then the fish farm, the, um, I'm going to use 50% of the bindings or the proceeds. And then I'm going to invest that in the stock market. 
and when I make the returns on it, I'm gonna use that money that I get. While that's generating funds, I'm gonna invest that in a hotel business. Then I'm gonna use that money to really fund an Airbnb. With, that should all happen within like five years. And then basically after that finishes, then the fund that is gonna yield is gonna have these slight source of incomes and it's gonna be definitely farming. It's gonna be an Airbnb and it's gonna be hotel. It's gonna be fishing and it's gonna be farming and that's how it's gonna work. And that's exactly how I'm gonna make my millions. I think that's overrated. I think that we plan, and I always say this, and I said it in my last post on Instagram, if you're not following me, be sure to follow. Um, I post a little bit more on the day-to-day -day basis um, where you can learn more about what's going on in my mind in real time. My only goal in high school was to save $8,000, $1,000. That's all I really wanted. That's all I really wanted to say. That was just that was just it for me. Once I get there, I would know what to do. My life will be perfect. Things will be great. And you have to understand the kind of time that I was living in. It was like a difficult time, so I couldn't see past my difficulty in that circumstance. And so I couldn't think far. I couldn't aspire for more, and I couldn't think like thousands of dollars. I can only think of a thousand dollars, and that's all I really want. So I think goal setting can be crippling, but I think having a general sense of the goal or the picture and kind of enjoying the process to get to that goal and allowing yourself to be flexible because people, circumstances are going to change, people are going to change, um, jobs are going to change, dreams are going to change, ambitions are going to change along the way and you don't want to beat yourself up or like feel like I'm in a place, let me stop talking to you because <laughs> really I'm talking to me. I don't want to feel like I'm in a place where I set these goals, I have them written in stone and like they, they can be changed and God doesn't work like that. He works things beyond our wildest dream and it could be that somebody can come up to you and hand you a thousand dollars then what are you going to do then um, as long as you keep the general goal in mind you should be fine number four kodak memories of people and moments can be just that they can be memories so i'm going to tell you a quick story um i had a friend from middle school um when i came from ghana that was like a terrible era in middle school where African booty scratches were a thing, like dashikis weren't cool, like it sucked to have your natural hair, like just things that are so glorified now weren't things back then. And so Africans were being picked on and I just came, I had an accent, I had everything that people can laugh at and African booty scratches were very much a thing. And I had this friend that looked out for me so much and um, in middle school, we didn't have phones, so um, after middle school, we fell out of place, not because we wanted to, but because just circumstances didn't permit. And so I always had this image of her, like just being such, be my savior, really, like helping me and really standing up to like bullies and really just being there for me, like really riding for me. Like she didn't have to, she was African-American, she didn't have to, and she rode for me hard. And so growing up, I always was like, oh my God, I gotta find her, I gotta really thank her, I gotta really show her my gratitude, and like, we gotta reconnect. She was like my best friend. So they were such a beautiful family, nice people, amazing people, and I wanted to reconnect and just show my gratitude to her, because she, she just has no idea like how much of a role she played so i wanted to show my gratitude to her and so i booked like a spa day for us we went out and i kind of laid it on thick with like trying to get back together like almost like aggressive like i was like texting her every day like hey i hope you woke up well like you know it was great rekindling with you because like again i had memories of what that relationship was and I wanted to kind of just pick up right back where we left off not knowing that life has changed people change things change circumstances change and we're different people in that time and so I did face a little bit of disappointment um, when I rekindled that friendship I kind of got offended but then I had to check myself I'm like we're different people like she's grown you're grown like different spaces and I was so disappointed because this is somebody that I just really much like like literally put on a pedestal in my life because she just put she I feel like she was the reason why I got through middle school one of the, one thing that that situation taught me was that it's okay to keep things in 
in memory of what they were like kind of like a memorial like it was great I honored her I respect her and leaving it as that because sometimes reopening that relationship or your imagination of what that relationship should be will leave you in a sense of disappointment capture them in the moment I appreciate it I respect it there's no beef there's no nothing it's just taking a Kodak moment of it and just respecting that we may be in different spaces. Um, so the next one that I have here is that there are times and seasons for everything and for everyone. And we are all literally walking different paths. So I think um, that kind of ties into the previous point that I made. Let's say I'm walking this way, you're walking this way. There's gonna be a time our time our paths cross, but then you know, we you keep going, I keep going. It doesn't mean that they won't cross again because life is like that for everybody and that's okay sometimes I tend to think like you know wow like why isn't this happening for me and why isn't this like I'm trying I'm trying really hard why isn't this happening for me or like put in all my um, my best foot forward give it in my all like I, I put in 110%, like 200,000% and like it's still not happening and like sometimes I will question. For me, what has been great for me is realizing that there are times and seasons like apples come in this season and sometimes watermelons come in this season and sometimes peanuts come the same time that yams come out. Times do change, seasons do change and that's okay. Um, somebody's harvest may be your time of um, growth or like you know planting season and just because people are seeing results faster than you doesn't mean that you're doing something wrong it just means that just wait till it's your time to harvest um, we were recently watching our wedding video and um the pastor that preached at the traditional pastor said hey um he basically mentioned the bamboo plant if you plant it and it takes about five years before it shoots up and within like five weeks it can shoot up to about 90 feet and that was so interesting to me because imagine um, somebody's planting, I don't know, I'm not really a farmer, but um, let's say somebody was planting a lemon tree and the lemon tree, like within every year, it grows a little bit bigger and bigger and bigger, but um, a lemon tree would never grow 90 feet, you feel me? So, um, and you had to wait five years and you're like, man, like look at that lemon tree go. Every day they have lemons, these people, lemonade, they got margaritas, if they're planting lime, you know, they could rim their tops and be like, just a whole bunch of ridiculous thoughts go through your head when, you know, somebody is in harvest season and you're still kind of waiting for your um, fruit to bear for it. Be sure to clap for others while it's the harvest season because um, your time is coming. Maybe your time is not, but that's okay um, because there are times of season life is like that that's just my excuse to dance but yeah life is like that and that's okay so the next point is God's plans are better than my plans and again going back to that thousand dollars example imagine if God answered my prayer basically um God's plans are better than ours a prayer that I like to pray is like your may your will be done because I know that my plans are trash because I, I know because I plan them. God always comes through and shows out and shows off and I'm always pleased with the results. So um, God's plans are better and if you think, kind of tie into another point I made earlier, um, sometimes you don't need a plan. Sometimes you just have to lean into God and just know that his covering and his plans and his direction for your life is enough to keep you going in there. The next point I have here is you have to force you have to force there was a phase in my life in my 20s where i was just kind of like mm, that's kind of how i am that's kind of how i do things that's just kind of how i think that's just kind of like you know like basically this was the reason so that and that's just how we're gonna keep doing it and i realized that after a while like if this is it, then what am I what am I really fighting for? What am I really pushing for? And so I really had to force myself out of my comfort zone. First it was my way of thinking. Um, thank God for the course I took in psychology. Basically I had to shift my mind. I had to unlearn. I'm still unlearning a lot of things and I had to relearn a lot of different things. 
don't get comfortable in any situation don't get comfortable in any circumstance any job don't get comfortable in any way of thinking and one of the things um, that comes to mind was like I'm doing something I find that is too comfortable and it becomes too repetitive it becomes too routine feels like I'm just comfortable I gotta switch it up it's time to kind of think and really push past um, my comfort zone and I think at the end of your comfort zone is when you really see like real practical changes at least that's been the case for me and i've been enjoying that and that's something that i'm going to continue to do i've always pushed past my goal well, another thing that i really wish i knew this earlier in life because i've always been a yes person i don't know how to say no saying no is so difficult for me i feel like i've disappointed you i feel like i've, I've let you down i feel like you hate me if i say no to you no has just been a difficult word for me what I realized um, is that every time I say yes, let's say I have 10 people and I say yes to everyone, I have to split my time 10 ways. But if I say yes to maybe three people, I can really commit and do those three things really well. I started prioritizing my time, my energy, my resource and really saying yes to things that I can do at 120%. That in life you just have to kind of narrow it down, narrow down your energy and spreading myself thin is something that I've spent my entire life doing. And um, I just come to the conclusion that I'm not gonna do that as often. Um, I will do it in an emergency, like if the situation requires me to be in multiple, multiple places at once, in multiple situations at once, I will do it. But if I have control, um, I say things, no to things a little bit more. Integrity too, because if you don't do things well, your reputation is that, uh, yeah, like you know she's gonna do it some way but if you do a few things really well then you know your reputation speaks for itself but if you do a lot of things really poorly then your reputation is that you know you do things poorly and that's not the kind of reputation I want for myself and so that's just something that I've learned to stay away from and I'm still working on it saying no is still very much difficult another thing that I learned is that embrace every version of yourself and so one of the things that I really used to do especially with YouTube um, my first video was posted a long time ago like maybe seven a little seven years or so ago it's I'm not making this up you can go back and check I think I still have the videos up and I used to be like man look how many views I had in my old videos because I I did um, develop a following who liked what I was doing and I fell off for like years and then I came back and I tried to tackle it a bit more and then I stopped and then I came back and now like I think I'm back full-time but I don't know <laughs> I used to be like, man, old me was amazing. Old me was so cool. Old me was so determined. Old me was just great. And I would always compare old me to new me and I would be mad at me, the current stage that I'm in because old me was just so much better. And I had to like take a step back. Like old me didn't have a setup like this old me didn't have the experience that I now have under my belt old me didn't have a studio old me didn't have her lighting down pack old me um just didn't have it together old me didn't have a method to film it at one point I think YouTube was really the um the platform that made me kind of reflect on that um concept in other areas in my life so I was like old me was great but new me is better and I have to be okay with new me being better embrace new me and learn from new me so that the new west version of me would be proud of the me that I am today so the last point and I don't know how y'all gonna feel about this but I did not come to this life to kill myself I came and I was like if there's a hard method to do it like that's the method I will opt out for because I felt like it showed grit, showed integrity. Now, that is not the case. If there's a shortcut, if there's an easier way to get to it, as long as it's done and within, you know, ethical and like not, nobody's being hurt, that's the way that I'm taking. 
There is no competition for who is the most hardest working. There is no competition for um, who has endured the most pain and really carried the most on their back. And like I had to walk a thousand miles. Like it's nice that you can walk a thousand miles, but if I don't gotta walk a thousand miles and I could take the bus. I'm gonna take the bus. I cannot come and kill myself. Like, I can't. You will live and you'll die. That's just the natural order of life. But I'm not gonna come kill myself sooner than I need to. A lot of the things that I do share on this channel is ways to like either do things easier, things to save more money, things to just maximize. Um, so if you are into that kind of content and today was just kind of a pass through, I think you will enjoy this um, content, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and join the family. You can also follow me on Instagram. Um, I talk about the more day-to-day -day aspects of my life, things that are going on in my mind or in my life in real time, so you can also catch more there. So yeah, that summarizes the 10 um, top things that I've learned so far in life. I do know that there's so much more to be learned, and um, these things that I mentioned, I'm not like a professional professional expert in these topics they're just things that I'm still working through but during my reflection I did take a pen and paper and sort of write down the things that I wanted to talk to you about and, so. and I hope to see you in the next video take care <laughs>